we share With a dash of this and a pinch of that Mixed all up with care The best company and conversation Recipes and new creations We're cooking up something good here at home We are cooking up something good here at home Hello family and yes we are We're cooking up something good today because today I'm making recipes that my mom used to make. She was an excellent cook. And she's the one that kind of instilled in me the desire. She, she, could, she could put a meal together that fast. She just knew how to plan it, how to prepare for it, what to get, what to make, where, you know, just put it all together. And this is one of the things my brothers and my dad and I, we loved. It was Mama's beef pot pie. And she made it. My dad since, said since they first got married, she, she started then to make it. And all through our lives, until she went to be with the Lord, she made Mama's beef pot pie. She didn't use beef cubes because she started this during the war when you couldn't get chunks of beef, but you could get ground beef. And I've made it since then with beef cubes. Don't like it as well as I like it with a good ground beef. So that's what we're going to do today. I want to give you a little instruction in case we have a lot of new viewers that are just seeing us for the first time and some of you folks that have been watching us for a long time. When you send for recipes, and we give that information at the end of the program, we need to make sure that you send this size of an envelope, and it's addressed to CTVN or at home, at home would be fine, One Signal Hill Drive, Wall, Pennsylvania. Do not put that address up here. Put your address up here, please. Because if something happens, it comes back to us, and then you never get your stuff, and then you're saying, how come I didn't get my recipes? And the self-addressed envelope that comes on the inside, it needs to be this size. Don't send us those little ones, because if you do, guess what? That, that monthly newsletter is so thick that you can't get it folded in a small envelope and get it in the mail to you. And so, you know, when we have to do that kind of stuff, uh, sometimes it takes a longer time for you to get your recipes, and we want you to get them quickly. So please, this is the size, and you have to put a stamp. Don't forget to put your stamp on there and send it just like this. This is the size envelope you need, okay? want to make sure everybody knows that. It makes the girls happy upstairs. They have to process all of this, and we want to do, uh, want you to get your in, Enjoy newsletter in good condition and not all wrinkled up and bunched into, a, into an envelope. So please keep this in mind. Well, along with Mama's meat pie, she also would always make staple applesauce, coleslaw, mm, and then a dessert. I'm not going to tell you what that is, but when we come back, we're going to get started. So stay with us, and we'll be right back right after the hint. Here it is right now. Here's today's at-home hint. Has your honey turned hard and crystallized? Honey that is solidified can be brought back to liquid life by uncovering the jar, placing in the microwave, and heating on medium power for 30 seconds to one minute. It will be smooth as new and delicious too. If you've got a helpful hint, we'd sure like to hear from you. Send your hint to At Home Hints, Cornerstone Television, Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148-1499. Well, Patty's joined me in the kitchen, and she's chopping up some mushrooms, yes, right? I am. Mm -hmm. Some fresh mushrooms. Just going to make those in some chunks, sliced up. And what I have, for, we're starting, this is the base for Mama's pot pie. And we have two pounds of ground beef here. And I have, we've browned it off. And you want to keep some of the, the juices, although there's not grease on here. You can see it's very dry. But we added one clove of garlic that we minced, and we added a cup of finely chopped onions. And just let that sweat in there. Now, I'm going to turn the gas up on this because it needs to come up because we're going to put some flour on this. I want to make sure this, this is cooked through. You can see it's really cooked. There's no pink in that. And then we're just going to add flour because this is going to help us. You want to get it all over the meat. Now, you don't want this real, real thick to, when we make the gravy because you want that gravy to come up and cook the uh, crust that we're going to be putting on the top of it. I think I'm going to add just a little bit more. And you want this to almost, not brown, but I mean not burn, but almost right. get to that edge where it starts to get a little bit crispy because that's when it renders all that wonderful flavor out of the beef. And so you just keep turning it, keep, keep it going. 
And while that is starting to absorb, you want to cook the flour taste out. That's the important thing. So we're going to want to salt. This is kosher salt. Remember, you don't use as much because it's more pungent. And we're going to do some pepper. And if you like different seasonings in with your meat, you can use that. Like what other seasoning would you use? Like basil or yeah, basil even oregano good, or something like that. They you would all work out. Salt? Oh, you could. On season salt at our house. Yeah, I know you told me that. You could do that. But you just want this to be cooking up and getting brown. When it starts to stick to the bottom of the pan, that's a good sign because that's the fawn on the bottom there that's coming up. It's drying out because of the flour. And that makes those little bits so good. All right, after that's done, then we're going to take our beef broth. As soon as that has browned up, then we're going to add, this is a whole 32 ounces. And we're just going to add that in there. I can remember coming home from school and smelling this cooking in the kitchen. Mama would be doing this, you know, like 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. <gasps> and then you couldn't wait. Oh, Because yeah. oh, that smell is like, oh. Look how nice that is. You see how that brought up a nice yeah. gravy? Oh, yeah. And, and this adds more flavor. So you, you could use bouillon. I, I tend to stay away from the bouillon because the salt is too much. Yeah, too right. much. But this is certainly not going to be enough because we have potatoes and carrots and peas and mushrooms to add to it. So what I do at this point, I add some water. And you can taste it because if it tastes like it's watery, throw it. If you have more beef broth, you can do that. But what you want to do is make sure that there's enough broth for these vegetables to be covered so that they start to cook because we're going to need to start putting them in now. Okay, we're going to add our carrots. This is about two cups of carrots. They're, and you cut them small because they'll cook quicker that way. If you leave them real big, it takes forever for them to cook. And then we have our potatoes. And I like the red potato for this because I think it cooks quicker. And they seem to be more tender than right. those big, heavy-duty ones here. So this just looks gonna... really interesting. When I've never, never made done this? Them, no, I've made pot pies, but never in a pot. Oh, that's why it's called pot pie. I've always done it in the dish. and <laughs> Yeah, I made it like a chicken pot pie. Yeah. With the crust on the bottom. I've never done it like this. This is really well, interesting. This, this is the way Mama did it. And she had one pot that she always used because it just she knew how much Perfect, of everything right. to put in so it would be the right amount. And you really want... I mean, this is going to feed a lot, like probably eight people easily. Oh, wow. And the thing is, if you only want to make a half of batch, use a smaller pot. But it's the same principle. You're still right. going to make it the same way. And you want this to cook on top of the stove for a little while, just so, look at that. Like the potatoes cook down. Yeah. And do you cook it till the potatoes get nice and soft? No, 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 because it's going to go in the oven and bake. Because oh, okay. when you put the crust on it, it's going to bake. So it's going to have another 30 minutes in the oven. So you really don't want this because you're going to have mush if you cook it too much. Too long. You just okay. want to bring this up to a boil. I think I have that on as high as it'll go. Let's see. We always don't, we never know about this stove. Yeah, there you go. Get a little higher. Okay. So, Patty. Get rid of this. Can we, um, let me do the mushrooms too while we're at it. Yep, here's the mushrooms. Okay. Here we go. Take a look at them going in there. So that just gets everything going. Right. And then the right. oven finishes it up. Okay, now. Over there beside you is the applesauce. Right. And we're going to do that. Let me give you this pan. Okay. Um, Mama used to doctor up applesauce, okay? By that, I mean she'd take a jar like that. Okay. Or if somebody would give us some homemade, of course, that's always better. But she'd say, you know what? You can make applesauce and doctor it up, she called it, and make it taste like it's like fresh made. So, you know what? Let me give you a hint. Put the lid back on that. Yeah. and turn it upside down and let it sit on your counter. And by the time that you're done with this, that will all have drained down and you can open and you save, you don't throw it away. Right. All right, let's put this on the fire. Okay. And, uh, the sugar and no, I want this it? to warm up a little bit. And then you put the sugar and then and stuff we're going to add a little sugar and some cinnamon and a touch of butter. And you want to do this ahead of time because you really want that to, it's going to be hot, it has to be hot so it melts the sugar and it cooks everything, but you don't want it to be piping hot. You want it to be just warm when you serve it. That's the way we like it the best. Oh, it's yeah. Warm. I love warm applesauce. Mm -hmm. Yum. Okay. Jenna, Jenna likes it chunky, and she puts it over ice cream. Oh, jeez. It's such an odd thing, ice but it's cream. really good. Oh, okay. 
That's different. Mm -hmm. But if it's right. chunky. Uh-huh. Okay, now, you're going to do that. When that comes up to, starts to get, get around hot. the edge, then you're going to add about a half a cup or so of sugar and a touch of cinnamon. Right, and butter. And a little chunk of butter. And we're going to do that. We're going to take a break. We come back. We're going to be adding some more to our really big, delicious dinner. We'll be right back. All right, if you just joined us, we're making Mama's beef pot pie. We've got some applesauce cooking. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to show them, empty that bottle. Look how much has come down. Yep. Okay, empty that out and show them. Look, that's a whole Ooh. lot of applesauce. And you want that to be like that. And, you know, it's good and hot. We brought it to a boil. We added our sugar and our um, cinnamon and our chunk of butter. Now she's going to pour that into a bowl, and that's ready to go. My pot pie here, look at this. It's boiling, it's come up to a boil. I'm ready to put the crust on, but first, we wanna add a half a bag of frozen peas. Don't cook them, don't thaw them. Right out of the freezer, just drop them in there. That okay? Is, this is like the coolest recipe. It's so easy. Yeah. And what's nice about it, I love the color. Isn't that yeah. nice, that color in yeah, there? Yeah, the green really makes it. Uh-huh, and this is a big pot full. I'm telling you, this yeah. is a really big pot full. Patty, I think when I put the crust on that, we're gonna set this, I'm gonna add a few more. Uh, we're going to set this on a cookie sheet because we don't want this right. cooking over all the oven. Oh, yeah, that could, huh? Because that's like no fun. No fun. So, remember, those potatoes have had a chance to start to cook. You can tell that meat, that flavor has blended. Let's turn yeah. this off. Okay? Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, what I have here is a refrigerator pie crust, just plain. And I'm going to doctor it up with some add... This is some onion salt. This is just gonna give it some flavor. Hello, come on out. There it comes. Just to give it some flavor. Wanna check that? We got some rice cooking yeah, back there. It's, it's boiling away. Okay, turn it down so we can see how much we have. Cause you don't want that to go dry. That's for our rice pudding that we're gonna be making for dessert, which I didn't tell you, but that's what the dessert's gonna be. This is Paul's yeah. favorite rice pudding. You're yeah. gonna love it too. I think we're okay with that. look at that? Does yeah. that look good? Yep. I've never done this, okay, so Okay, shut know. it off. And then I'm going to add some garlic salt to this. That's going to look really pretty, too, on top yeah. of there. And what you do is you just take your rolling pin and you roll it into the crust so that it stays on the crust. And you want this crust to get a little bit bigger than the pan that you're going to cover. All right? So, Patty, I'm going to give you that to get it out of the way because now we have to do some major work here, okay? You're gonna put that, let's have that uh, on a cookie, cookie sheet. sheet, yeah. And we're gonna set that cookie sheet what over here. Right here. Yeah, and now I'm just gonna put this pan right there. And put this on the cookie sheet. On the sheet. cookie sheet. Go. And then what you're gonna do with this is, now some people would set this on the top but I'm afraid that that's gonna burn, the spices would burn, so, and I want to flavor what's inside with that, so I turn it upside down and put it on. Uh, and you, you want it, tricky. Look at this. just drape it over, just like that. Yeah. You press it on the edge. Mama used to make a big crust, and she would drape it around the edge of the pan, and it would drop down, and this would all get crispy and crust. Oh, now, do you flute this like you would have? No, you don't you do just, anything. You, you just, just, let it, just let it hang like wow. this, and then you wanna put, like a little X in the top because you need a steam hole or else it could explode a cake. <laughs> we don't want that. No. Okay, you know what I do want? I don't like all that flour because that will burn too. So when you have too much flour on it, just take your brush and brush it off because we don't want, I know I'm making a mess here, but <laughs> the right. elves will come and clean. Because like <laughs> we don't want that burning all over the place. You look like me cooking now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Patty, I'll open the door. Oh, can you do it? Okay. Yeah, do it. Go you ahead, think girlfriend. that's deep enough? Yeah, I think so. We'll see. If not, we can go to plan B. Yeah. All right. Careful. This is good. Yeah, that's this is good. heavy. It's now, good. that's on 350. Now, you have to be careful because you want to make sure that the handles on the pot that you use can tolerate temperature. And I know that goes to 350. So for about 30 minutes until it gets crisped up, that also gives all the contents of the pot pie a chance to really get going there. Okay. okay. Moving no. right along. What, what are we doing now? Do Applesauce in the bowl, okay. and then I'll we have the that. rice pudding. And you start the pudding. Tell okay. us about the pudding. All right, well, we already cooked the rice with the water. One cup of rice, and just cover it with water. Put it on with a little bit of salt, 
and let it cook till it's almost dry. So it's like, yeah. And then we add, I'm going to carry it all over. Oh, you could take the pan over there. That would be smart, huh? <laughs> Save steps. Save steps. That would be yeah. smart. All right. And this then, applesauce smells like it's homemade. I'm telling you. Just oh. that little bit of heat. Oh. And then you add the sweetened condensed milk. That's one can. Now, that's not canned milk. That's sweetened sweet. condensed. It's a Eagle real brand. thick. That's right. Thick and sweet. Yipper. This is the good stuff. I love this stuff. Well, they're so versatile. You can make so much mm -hmm. stuff with that. That's what I like Yeah, you can. It. And then you add a cup of milk, which you actually put it in the can. So it's actually it's a, a can, can of full milk. of milk. That's plain whole milk. Right. Okay. Which is almost. Keep going. Yep. Yeah. Actually, a little bit more. That would have been okay. Go ahead. Okay. And then we need a cup of water. Just a plain cup of water. Okay. That'll work. Give me the can. And then that cleans the can out, too, so sure. that you get all that all good the stuff out. Absolutely. I'm so glad I'm learning in. how to do this. All at one time. This yeah. is Paul's very favorite, all-time favorite, I'm telling you. Okay, and then we put the butter in. You put the butter in. Let's put that on the stove. Let's get that going, okay? Okay, because put the butter in before mm -hmm. him? Sure. Okay. And you can either season this with cinnamon. Since we have cinnamon here, I'd probably do nutmeg there, just for a little variety. Okay, and uh, that makes... We're going to cook that on a low. We'll start it out to get it boiled, and then you want to turn it down. Now... The important thing is keep an eye on that because that baby will boil over that fast. So you have to really keep an eye on it. And do you want it at a low heat, medium heat? You want it on a medium heat to start. Okay. And then right before it's, it starts to get thick, she's going to add a half a cup of raisins. That's optional. If you don't like it, don't do it. Don't do it. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to, that's, a rice pudding is known to be kind of heavy. So we're going to lighten that up. So we need some Cool Whip. And we need our cold um, rice pudding that we already okay. made ahead of time. While you're doing that, I'm going to throw together my coleslaw. You're gonna, this is so easy, it's ridiculous. But I thought it would be good to do it. Head of cabbage. Do this in your food processor. And then we're going to add, we just added some carrots for color. This is the key, a couple of teaspoons of sugar. If you have a big head of cabbage, you want a couple of tablespoons. All right, and just mix it around. And then what I do, good old Hellman's. I use only Hellman's. I don't use the tart stuff. I just don't like, don't like it, so this is what I use. Okay, and what you want to do is put a start with a cup if you have a big head of cabbage, and then start to mix it. If you're making this ahead of time, this is going to get milky as it sits because the cabbage will start to render its juice. But if you're going to make this like now and sit down and eat, you're going to make it more moist, okay? Then you want to keep it refrigerated until you do use it. How are we doing over there? Good. Okay. The butter's starting to melt. Okay, Patty, I want you to take this bowl, and we have a small Cool Whip. And I want you to get a spatula, and I just want you to lighten this up with oh, that. Put the Cool Whip in there. Yeah. Now, you can eat it like this. This is perfectly wonderful. Or you can add the Cool Whip, which just lightens it up. And it makes it go further, too, which is kind of nice. Okay. You got it. I'm telling you, this is a wonderful meal, especially if it's cold outside. Of course, we like it any time of the year. But when it's cold, it's really nice. You put a nice loaf of bread with it, and uh, you got the whole meal. And it's not that hard to make. Mm -hmm. It's not expensive. It's a good, nourishing meal for you. Yeah, this looks like it's going to be Lighten really good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lighten it up. Okay, we come back. We're going to be in the dining room, and you're going to be able to see everything we made today. And here's how you can get all the recipes. Stay tuned. You're going to want to be sure to get the recipes because I'm telling you, take a look at the table. Your family would love to sit down at this table. Oh, my. Uh-huh, yes. because there's everything you could want. Look at our wonderful pot pie, Mama's Beef Pot Pie. That's what it looks like. Look at that crust on top. Now, you just break that edge off, and then you, you cut us like into a wedge like you would a regular pie, and then you scoop down, put the piece of crust on the plate, and then you scoop down and get that stew that's under there. Oh, yeah. Next to it is our coleslaw right down there in the front. That's what it looks like, a little paprika on the top of it. But remember to moisten that with enough mayonnaise so you can taste it. And if you make it early in the day, it will get wet, so you can let it be a little drier. But if you're serving it immediately, you want to keep it pretty moist. And there's our um, doctored up applesauce. Doesn't mm -hmm. that look like homemade? Yes, it does. And I'm Looks telling you, good. the apple smell in this place is awesome. Then here's our, look at this. This is our rice pudding. 
we just added a little bit of cinnamon in the middle and we did a little few little cherries on the top and it also makes a really lovely individual dessert if you wanted to do them this way and not have it on the um, table in a, in a bowl. Whichever way, it's awesome and it's delicious. We just add a nice loaf of fresh bread and a little bit of mm, raspberry preserves. What more could you want? This is comfort food. And I hope you've been comfortable as we've been making it today because oh, it, yeah. it wasn't hard to put mm -mm, together. Very all. simple, very easy. And it's okay to open up a can occasionally or to open up an applesauce and then doctor it up, as Mama used to say. And the coleslaw, make it in your food processor, easy to do. And that pot pie, you saw how easy that was. Cook the meat, put the vegetables in, thicken it up a little bit, put a crust on it, let it bake a half hour. You have a wonderful dinner. We're always glad when the family comes by, and we hope that we have helped you to get some ideas of something a little different. This is good comfort food. Sticks to your ribs, as Mama said. God bless Mama. She was a great cook. Well, we're so glad you dropped by. Be sure to join us the next time because it just wouldn't be the same without you here at home. We'll see you then. Furnishings provided by Levin Furniture, featuring Lane's Country Living Collection. Food provided by Jordan Banana Company, wholesalers of fresh fruit and vegetables in Travosburg, Pennsylvania. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.